All right, let's do another use case here with ChatGPT. In this case, we're going to be developing some Excel logic, something we've done before, but I thought would be fun to show you how uh, I do it in another case. And in this particular case, an Accelerator member reached out, uh, said that, uh, hey, we're growing rents on an annual basis. What if I want to grow rents monthly, but result in a same effective annual rent growth? And so this is something that I honestly hadn't done in a few years, uh, but I certainly had done it. I understand that we've got to convert the annual rate to some monthly rate such that when that monthly rate compounds monthly, it results in an annual rate that's the same, right? And kind of, kind of a, a finance 101 concept in a textbook I read years ago and, and something that I've done from time to time is I, I build models. But anytime I need to do this, because it's not up here in the brain, Prior to ChatGPT, it would have been just a uh, trial and error exercise. I drop in a formula that I think, maybe I do some, some Googling to find uh, the, the formula to convert annual to monthly rates, and then would work with that together with the various inputs that I have to come up with a formula. And it might take me 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe a little longer, depending on the complexity of the formula in this case. Not particularly complex, but complex enough that I couldn't do it on the fly. And I thought, let's try this with ChatGPT, and I did. I went through this conversation back and forth. I had an Excel model open next to me so I could test the suggestions that ChatGPT was giving. I also used a math-specific plugin that ChatGPT has, which gives ChatGPT access to mathematical calculations that hopefully make it smarter. And those things combined allowed us to get to a pretty good end here. So let's get into it. So here you see the initial prompt that I fed to ChatGPT, again, having enabled a math-specific plugin. If you're curious what that plugin is, it is called Wolfram, okay? So the prompt I tried to keep simple. I said I have a formula, takes a market rent value, say 100 bucks, grows it by some annual growth rate, say 2%. That formula is, and I shared the formula that I use in almost every one of my models. And then I give an example. This is to ensure that ChatGPT understood, understood what I was saying. So if I had a time scale where there are monthly periods, the result is that the market rent from months one through 100 is 100, or one through 12 is $100, month 13 through 24 is 102, and so forth. And I'd like to find a formula that would also result in an effective annual growth rate of 2%, but would grow the $100 monthly such that market rent in month one would be 100, higher in two, higher in month three, but would be 102 in month 13, 104.04 in month 25, et cetera. Can, I, can you help with that? And, and sure enough, ChatGPT came out and said, yeah, I can help. What you're looking for is a formula that applies the growth rate on a monthly basis instead of annually. This is often referred to as compound interest, and it's a common concept in finance. And then ChatGPT dropped uh, or, or spit out some formula. And I said, great. Uh, and it said, I'm glad you, I, you, I could help. And I said, could you show the formula in a format like this so that I can copy and paste? And this was so I could share it back with the Accelerator member. And they did that. And uh, ChatGPT also gave me uh, the, the um, call it description of the variables in this formula. And I said, excellent. Could you provide the in this formula description of, for my original formula? So it did the same. And... As I was going through that, and what uh, that was is basically I wanted ChatGPT to take and add the variable description for my formula, which it did. But then when I tested it, uh, I discovered that the formula was wrong, okay? It, in essence, was not resulting in a annual rate that was the same. Uh, the compounding effect resulted in a month 13 value of 102.02 rather than the 102. Two that it needed to be. And so I fed that, those details back to ChatGPT. And ChatGPT, for the first time, now went to this Wolfram. Actually ran the calculation, I think, to confirm whether I was wrong or right. And you see the response back from Wolfram. And ChatGPT realizes that it had made a mistake. The discrepancy arises due to the compounding effect when the growth is applied monthly, which is interesting because it knew that there was a compounding component here. Nevertheless, it got it wrong on the first. And so it comes back and it says, hey, if you want the value to be exactly a 102 at the end of the year, you would need to adjust the monthly growth rate slightly. 
If you remember its first formula, it just simply had a monthly growth rate. What it needs is to adjust the monthly growth rate and it calculated that for us, right? Calculated using Wolfram, came up with some percentage here. And so the adjusted formula would be this. And then it gives me again, the description of the variables. And that's fine, except for this R underscore monthly uh, doesn't tell me much. Now up here, I know that R underscore monthly is the 101.02 or one plus rate raised to the one divided by 12. Um, but it doesn't include that in the formula here. And so I said, please update the adjusted formula above to include the calculation for R underscore monthly, which it did. But then what it did is it said 1.02 raised to the one divided by 12. Well, there's a variable here. It's not 1.02, it's one plus R. So I asked it to update that variable. It did, as you see. I went in and, and tested it and we're almost there. What I realized is ChatGPT had me raising it to the value of T. T is the number of months since time zero. But the result of that is that in period one, which is really when we're starting to, to grow from, in, in order to have the same effect as our annual, we needed period one to be equal to the in-place rent and then grow from there. And so I said, let's replace T with T minus one. It did. You're right, I apologize for the oversight. It made that update and I can say, thank you. That's it for now. And it closes out our conversation. You're welcome, I'm glad I could help. Don't hesitate to return you for more questions. So let me show you what that looks like now in practice. So I have this initial formula, right? So what happens here is I have $100 rent per month and time zero, and I want a 2% annual growth. And what that results in is that the first month of our second year is going to have a value that's 2% higher than our in place. So we see our first 12 months is 100. Okay. Our next 12 months is 102. Our next 12 months after that would be 10404 and so forth. So what does the formula look like when, and, and that formula is as so such market rent times one plus R raised to the N being year n minus one. The monthly increase is market rent times one plus, and then the effective monthly rate, which is one plus R raised to the one divided by 12 minus one. And all that raised to the T, which is the number of months since time zero minus one. And I've already written it, I'll just turn it, the, uh, the, the font back to black. You see here, again, we start it with the same rent, but we have here some growth in each month. But the result at the end of our first year, going into the second year, is that we have the same rent we're starting with now in month 13. We go 102, and we eventually grow to 104.04 .04 by year three. So that's another example of how I've used ChatGPT to tackle some Excel logic that I had. Let me know if you have other use cases here. I'd love to uh, play around with those. Otherwise, thanks for your time. Oh, 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 oh,